Hollywood Studios here, and today we are at a brand new Six Flags Park. We are at the first park of our California trip. As you can see ahead, that is Six Flags Discovery Kingdom. Very excited to check this park out. We did get the diamond parking, but it's still a hike from the park, so we'll see you guys on the long walk up there. Almost done with this insanely long walk to the park entrance. You have to walk all the way around the DC area and then make it all the way up. You even get to walk right under Flash, which is pretty cool. Actually, really nice entrance with that ride being there. Something interesting here, the gaming house is outside of the park, as opposed to being inside the park like a great adventure, but they do have the nice red carpet for Diamond, Diamond Elite, and Diamond Pass holders. Bob, unfortunately, isn't good enough to be included in that, so he has to go through the plebeian line. All right, so we have made it inside of Six Flags Discovery Kingdom. I believe our first stop is going to be Flash Vertical Velocity. Due to its tendency to go down, we want to make sure we get on it before that happens. So far, this park is actually really, really nice looking. We're gonna head over into the DC universe, like I said, to hopefully get on Flash, maybe Joker, but it looked like Joker had a pretty long line, as well as Batman the Ride. We'll be doing some on-ride filming tomorrow morning on Superman, Batman, Joker, and one more, I can't think of it, um, Medusa, that's it, yeah, so. We're not gonna prioritize those rides as much as the other ones today, because we will be back here tomorrow, just to get whatever we weren't able to get in today in, but. We're gonna head down here and see what's up. Looks like while well, Great Adventures Seaport died a couple years ago, the one here at Discovery Kingdom is still going strong. We'll have to go in there and get on the kid coaster a little later on. Here we are at the DC Universe area of the park with the aforementioned Flash, Joker, Batman, Superman, as well as their Wonder Woman pendulum ride. There might be another ride squeezed in here too, but we'll see you guys at whatever ride we go to first. Looks like our first ride of the day will be the Flash Vertical Velocity. got off of the flash vertical velocity in pretty much the back rows. What'd you guys think? That was really good. Um, really good. It's really stupid looking like from the ground, but yeah, I like that better than the most of the like, normal ones. It's yeah, it was cool. The, like, you know, go through this way instead of straight up. Yeah. So. It's just not that, but it was such a unique ride. The hang time coming off that spike there was some of the best I've ever had, so that was really fun. Yeah, it was some good hang time. It was weird because you could definitely feel that it runs slower than the others just because of the height difference. So when you come to this backward spike right here and you hit it, normally you gray out on the full scale ones, but this one, you just kind of glide over and then float. It's really, really weird, but yeah, Flash is a pretty cool ride. So since we're guaranteed to ride Superman, Joker and Batman tomorrow morning for some filming. We're gonna come back later or just skip them today. We're gonna go over to the other coasters of the park. So we'll see you guys over there. Walking through Looney Tunes Seaport here, it is scary how similar it is to Great Adventures or how similar it is to what Great Adventures was. They still even have the Bugs Bunny ball pit, although it doesn't look like it's been open in a little while, but that was like my favorite thing to do when I was at Great Adventure when I was a little kid. We're gonna attempt to go on the kiddie coaster now. It's pretty cool to have them back. We got the kitty coaster, thankfully. I don't think we ever want to do it again. No, dude, no, 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 no. <laughs> the, the break is just like, oh. My oh, it's, it's something, that's for sure. But 
Having ridden so many of those Zamperla Family Gravity Coasters, you pretty much know what to expect. It's a good ride for kids though, definitely much more intense than other kiddie coasters. But now we're gonna go try and find some other coasters at the park we haven't ridden quite yet, like Kong, Whoopi, Boomerang, and a few other rides. So we'll see you guys over there. Here we have the Summer Night Spectacular area. They have fireworks tonight, so we're definitely gonna try to stick around for those and check them out. They have a lot of different American themed um, food places and whatnot. They have a stage over there as well, so really cool setup here. Wonder how they're gonna do it tonight. So we made it over to Boomerang, but I do not think it is open. <laughs> it <laughs> doesn't. We somehow made it over to Boomerang. Somehow. It's a really interesting way you get back here, but I'm not seeing it open, so. It looks like the chain's up. Yes, the chain is up, so I do not believe it's open. And Sidewinder Safari is not open quite yet either. Hopefully, this will open tomorrow. I'm not sure if that will. I think so. But yeah, tomorrow's a Saturday, so it's possible we'll have better luck with more rides being open. I don't think Sidewinder will be opening anytime soon. I don't even see trains on the transfer track, so might have to miss out on this one, unfortunately. Next up is Cobra. There's your Tivoli, which unlike Harley Quinn at Great Adventure, has no line. So Cobra finally reopened after its downtime, so we got on it towards the back. What was weird is that it only goes around once, unlike the other Tivoli. Still a fun ride. I think now we're either going to ride this awesome looking thing or we're going to ride Kong. Kong, for those of you that don't know, is a Vacoma SLC model. And if you're well seasoned in the coaster community and you've ridden a few of them, you know they have a bit of a reputation, so I guess we'll see how that one goes. Time for Kong. Bye-bye. Here we go. So we just got off of the lovely Kong, and honestly, it wasn't as bad as other people were making it out to be. Some people say it's the worst SLC and whatnot. Really, as long as you're not going through a transition, it's fine. But those transitions, of course, they are Vacoma SLC, so it wasn't horrible, though. If it got the new restraints, it would probably be all right. Tom? Uh, I don't know why Bob sat this out. It felt like being tossed in a blender full of rocks. It was really cool. <laughs> I don't know, I didn't think it was that bad, and I've been on quite a few of these. Yeah, no, this is definitely not the worst one I've been on, that's for sure. Next up is Medusa, which is one of the more highly acclaimed B&M floorless coasters. This is Medusa West, that's Medusa East, as be my it is called. This my 170, let's Yeah, very excited to check this out. It looks like it has a really unique layout compared to the other B&M floorless coasters, so we'll see you guys up there. The theming for this ride is actually really, really cool. It's well set up, the queue looks nice, and there's a lot of plants in the queue as well. I'm really impressed. Nice walk on for Medusa today, which is awesome. The floors have dropped, and you're going to drop too. 150 feet at 65 miles per hour, and three seven inversions. Hopefully, you're ready to do your not, I don't care. So, we just got off of a back row ride on Medusa, which Honestly, that may very well be the best floorless coaster. Glass smooth, 
Really intense, great forces, good long ride. That was excellent. What'd you guys think? I told you going in, that was my favorite floor was, and I hope it held up to that. Oh, it definitely it's did. Really I, I think when you ride Kong right before, it enhances the Medusa ride experience because it's already smooth, I'm sure, on its own. But when you have that to compare it to, top tier. That thing is ridiculously smooth, ridiculously forceful. I did not expect this ride to be this good. This ride is spectacular. Definitely the best ride we've ridden here so far. I mean, granted, we haven't ridden Joker or Superman, but that was really, really good. Walking around this park, we definitely agree that this is one of the nicest looking Six Flags parks. It has a very distinct theme and look to it, more of like a jungle atmosphere, and it's done very, very well. There's plants everywhere, everything. Yes, lots of shade. It looks very well maintained. Really, really nice Six Flags park. Next up is Batman, which is actually a free spin, just like Joker at Great Adventure, New England, and a few other parts. Really nice theming in the queue too, it looks awesome. We got the Batmobile right here. Looks a little different than the ones at some of the other Six Flags parks. And some schematics of their of Bruce Wayne's different vehicles. Batcycle, Batwing, Evac Pod. We just got off of Batman, the SNS 40 free spin here at Discovery Kingdom. It was weird because usually what I do on these rides is I kick around a little bit to make myself flip more. And he decided to not get the memo, so he didn't flip at all until the very last turn. I was like, come on, Dad, flip it. Good. And then we got thrown. It was really, really, really good, good, that final flip. Fun ride, Bob. Uh, I've been on it before, but I like the Batmans here in Fiesta better than the Jokers. That is it's a cooler really theme, cool. too. Yeah, absolutely. Tom? The queue was themed really nicely. There were moments of intensity, yeah, but on the whole, I I, did. I've probably been on better free spins. So, Joker over here. We haven't ridden Joker or Superman, minus the two coasters that are closed. So that's all we have left. And Joker's line just does not seem to want to get down, so we might have to use our skips on it. Really cool Batman mural right here, too. So we might wind up using our skips for Joker. Superman, we could always wait until tomorrow if it has a long line. It has very low capacity due to it having really tiny trains and the fact that it only runs one train. So we'll just have to see what we decide to do with that one. We're gonna go take a look at what Superman Ultimate Flight's line looks like. Like I said, it might be long, we're gonna find out. But if it is long, we'll probably just wait until tomorrow morning to give it a ride. Much like a lot of the other Superman themed rides at the Six Flags parks, they have different posters of all the Superman villains. Over there is Dark Side. Then up here we have Lex Luthor, Bizarro, and now there are no more Bizarro themed rides in the Six Flags chain now that Bizarro Great Adventure went back to Medusa. And right here we have Metallo, who I've never heard of. We're probably just gonna hold off until tomorrow with Superman. We're gonna go for a ride, hopefully, on their Wonder Woman Lasso of Truth, which is a bit smaller than Great Adventures but it's actually in a really tucked away spot over here. Scratch that, we might give it a ride tomorrow. Superman Ultimate Flight, Bob and I rode in the back row, Tom and my dad rode in the front row. I think the general consensus is that is the best Skyrocket 2. The combination of the really neat theming with the tunnel, along with the fact that it's no comfort collars, definitely makes it the best one in my opinion. Dad, you agree? Wow, that was really good. I don't know if it's actually faster, it just feels faster. And just the freedom of not having those damn comfort collars just makes this ride stand out. Definitely. What do you guys think? I concur. <laughs> uh, I mean, I've been on it before, but I told you before we went, the launches are more intense, and it's really, really good. Oh, definitely. Yeah, that was really, really good. Nice surprise. Props to Discovery Kingdom for having a Taz walk-around character. I haven't seen this in years at a Six Flags Park. Two, three. Looks like we have a little bit of a dance party going on over here to get ready for the fireworks. We are going to check out their JB's Sport Bar and Grill. 
The other Six Flags park I know that has this is New England. There might be a few others, but let's see what they got in here. On the dining plan, there are three things that you can get as meals here. The higher tier things like double cheeseburger, JB's double barbecue bacon, the chicken wings are not available on the dining plan. I gotta say, Discovery Kingdom really is good on the food department. Definitely one of the better in, in terms of Six Flags parks that I've seen. The fries were really good, seasoned, and the burger was good too. So good on Discovery Kingdom. This is the shark experience here at Discovery Kingdom. Very, very reminiscent of SeaWorld. After eating, we decided we're just gonna plop ourselves in line for Joker, see how long it takes so that we can get a nice warmed up ride on it in the evening, see how it runs. Thankfully, it looks like the line actually died down a lot. So let's see how long that winds up taking. Joker in the back car, road built back two rows. Honestly, it was good, but definitely not one of my favorite RMCs I've ridden. I mean, it doesn't help that I was practically glued to my seat, which is not fun, but it was a good ride. Definitely had some good moments. A lot of turns that didn't do much, unfortunately, but it was still a cool ride. Dad, what'd you think? I liked it. It was okay. I mean, it was an earlier RMC. I mean, it didn't help that I got stapled to yes. death in my seat, which I just don't understand. There's no consistency with the restraints with the operators. They either blast you in the seat or they kind of let you be. It makes no sense. At the end of the day, you, the rider, know what feels safe on you. They shouldn't take someone else to dictate that unless it's not verified. But Bob, what'd you think? Um, it's what I remember it being. Like I remember it being fun, but like you said, not overwhelming. It has some cool moments, but it's really short and I didn't get stable luckily. It was a better ride than I had last time I was here, but it's also way colder now, like cooled way down. We didn't get it on when it was hot out earlier. Yeah. Uh, but it's still fun, but I mean, I don't know. They could have done more, I think. Yeah, I. it did about what I expected. Probably one of the weaker RMCs I've been on. I, But it does still make me wish that they'd bring it to this park here, but uh, maybe someday. Maybe someday. Yeah, I do want to get a, a, more, a few more rides on. It looks like the line is almost non-existent now. But hopefully I can get some more rides on it, maybe not stapled, and maybe get to see what the, I guess, higher acclaim for it is. Otherwise, though, probably the best coaster here. It obviously has the most airtime, but pretty solid ride overall. All right, so just in a second, redemption ride on Joker. Thankfully, my dad and I were able to get a little bit more room this time. Just like I said, it's really just not necessary to jump on someone's restraint or push it down as tight as you can. It winds up being more uncomfortable than having it looser than it should be, quite frankly. But Dad, how was that redemption ride? Oh, it was much better, much better. It's, it's a good ride. I like it. Yes, Don't definitely. Wrong. I do like it. I do think it's a good ride. It's definitely on the lower scale of the RMCs, but even a lower RMC is still really, really good. RMC does not make bad rides. How was your second ride? I mean, pretty much the same. I didn't win an Emmy by getting stapled like somebody did, so uh, <laughs> it was... Um, it was, also didn't have surgery not that, I, that is true. I had some room this time, more room this time, but it was pretty much the same. It's still fun, but I'm not blown away by it. Yeah, my second ride wasn't too different from the first. I didn't get as badly stapled, but it's an all right ride. I do, well, I will say, because I got to ride both left and right side, it's definitely a left side ride. For whatever reason, all the RMCs tend to have differing, I guess, experiences depending on the side that you ride on. And this one is definitely a left side one. But the airtime overall though, there's some moments that are really, really strong, like that first drop, it just throws you out of your seat. Other moments that really aren't as strong. So I don't know, it's a very weird ride, but still a very good one. So I decided I might grab myself 
a Discovery Kingdom shirt here. The merch selection across all the Six Flags parks is kind of iffy. Most of it is exactly the same across the parks. I have a shirt just like this from Georgia, so I figured I'd get one for Discovery Kingdom too. Headed out of the park with my ice cream cones so we can go watch the fireworks from the parking lot as I think it'll probably be a better view from over there just because you'll be able to see the park in the background. So we'll see you guys over there. See some fireworks set up being done out there. As you guys can see in the distance, those are the Discovery Kingdom fireworks. Kind of got out of there quick because we are very jet lagged. We haven't had any sleep in a very long time, so we had to get out of there. But we had a great first time at Discovery Kingdom for the three of us, and I'm sure Bob had a good time revisiting. We will be back there tomorrow morning, so stay tuned for that vlog. If you enjoyed this one, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye, guys.